Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures, so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Mallison. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Wednesday morning. Today it's arts and culture. We're going to tell you about some things going on at the Warner's Theater in Fresno, downtown Fresno, right near the baseball stadium. 436 Me TV option 11. Remember, if you want to be a part of the program, do call in, but also keep in mind, turn down the sound on your television set and do not wade through that painful message and We'll be back with our guest in just a moment. There's no doubt about it, today is Arts and Culture Day, and Arts and Culture is a very uh, important part of the fabric of this community, the Central Valley. There is no question about it. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to promo tomorrow's program because we will have a special half hour with our guy, Nick Papagni. Tomorrow, he is the PAG meter, will be focusing on and I think isolating on and really trying to dissect what's going on with the Fresno State Bulldogs. Their football team, of course, is 8 and 0. Oh, so be a part of the program tomorrow. Also be a part of the program today as well, 436 Me TV Option 11. You know, you might recall a couple of months ago we focused on the Warner's Theater. I call it the eighth wonder of Fresno or the Central Valley, kind of a takeoff on the Astrodome when they called it the eighth wonder of the world. And Sally Caglia was here just a couple of months back. Today we're going to talk about the Warner's Theater and what's going on there. I'm talking about events that's drawing some big crowds. Let's go to the videotape and I'll show you about the Warner's Theater built back in 1928 by Alexander Pantages, as we all know by now. And this thing still stands today and has most people looking on in awe. And the reason we are showcasing this Warner's again on this program is because in the next few months they will host a silent movie night. That's right, you heard correctly, like in Charlie Chaplin type movies. Last month they showed Phantom of the Opera. It drew 1,200 people. And the month before, yes, it was Charlie Chaplin, which drew about 500 people. Well, in a couple of weeks, November the 21st, another great silent movie will appear on the big screen at Warner's Hot Water, starring the late and the great Harold Clayton Lloyd. He was an actor, a producer who starred in about 200 films way back in the day, of course. So, anyway, live in our studio right now is Dan Fitzpatrick. He is the executive director of the Warner's Theater, and he is here to take your phone calls at 436 MeTV Option 11. Remember, turn down the sound, and um, I think don't wade through the message. I've said that a million times. We're back with our guest in just a moment. Now, why don't you tell us the whole story right from the beginning? All right, from the beginning. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. My name's Friday. I carry a badge. Police officers. You any idea who the other man was? My partner's Bill Gannon. Program? got just one big question. Yeah, when? Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. And we're back here live on the showroom floor at uh, Ventura TV, Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6. And glad to have along Dan Fitzpatrick, the executive director of the <laughs> Warner's Theater. So um, you've got Silent Movie Night. Tell us about this a little bit. 
Well, what we uh, looked at, we had an opportunity to showcase the theater and the organ of the theater. We have a historic Morton pipe organ in the theater. And so we decided to have a series. We have a series of seven silent films during the fall and spring of this year and the next year. And that we would uh, showcase uh, some of the great movies and some of the great actors of right. the time. And uh, so we've, as you said, we had the Charlie Chaplin film uh, two months ago, last month. Yeah, what I want to do is put, let's put it up on the screen, the full screens, and you can see the dates of all of these silent movie events. Uh, there's one of them right there, November 21st, Hot Water and Harold Lloyd. Go ahead. Right, well, ha Harold Lloyd um, uh, movie on November 21st will be a great uh, series. It's a comedy, and we're certainly reaching out to a lot of the kids in the school districts to uh, have them come and see uh, this genre of uh, movies uh, because uh, They've never seen silent films, let alone the organ playing with uh, the silent films. In the first two movies that we've had, uh, you would be surprised. The kids come with their iPads, thinking mom and dad are drive, you know, <laughs> dragging them to you know, this boring thing. And pretty soon, they're applauding to the action on the, on the screen and applauding, literally giving standing ovations to the organist that's playing along uh, you know, to the, uh, the movie. So that it's was great. Uh, what, Phantom of the Opera, and you had Charlie Chaplin before yeah, that. Yeah, right. Uh, that was Gold Rush. Yeah. And so it's interesting watching the folks come in because we have literally, many of them are three generations of families. Mom and dad bring grandma and grandpa and their kids uh, you know, to, the, to the movies. And you have three generations in there enjoying uh, uh, the film. So... Uh, we're very pleased with how well they're, you know, going over, and uh, we want to continue this this, you know, the year finishing out the series, and hopefully yeah. make it an ongoing event each uh, fall and spring of each year. All right. Before we get into hot water, um, let let's, you know, I, I think I want to ask you why you're doing this. Is it to showcase the Warners and how great a place it used to be or is now? Well. A lot of time, you know, is spent talking about the history of Warners. And my speech is, we need to make our own history. You know, Warners is an absolutely beautiful facility, and yes, it has a great history, but it has a great future. And our goal is, is to bring back, you know, some of the events that, the types of genre that used to play there, but we also bring in uh, some of the new uh, music uh, and other types of uh, entertainment on the stage at Warner's to create our new memories, our new history. Right. Uh, to, I like to say our mission as a foundation is to make Warner's Theater, again, the cultural arts, performing arts living room. Can of you Fresno. do that? Can you oh, do ab that absolutely, so? absolutely. We've, we've seen it dramatically, uh, the increase of the number of people that come in. If I had a dollar for everyone that has said one of two things, one, oh, I haven't been here for 20 or 30 years, or I didn't know this were here, we'd be very rich. Or I didn't know you were open. Right, right, <laughs> right. So part of what we're doing as a foundation is through things like the silent movie series. Uh, we have Joe Bonamassa coming up uh, mm -hmm. in uh, December. We had Catherine Jenkins there uh, a couple months ago is to show the community not only are we open and a viable ongoing major portion of the community, but we also have our uh, school groups and community groups that are more and more we're inviting to you know, utilize the facility and they get an opportunity to see you know, Warner's Theater. I wanna go into this videotape right now because this is the 1924 film they're gonna be showing on November the 21st. It's called Hot Water. It's a silent film. Uh, this one stars Harold Clayton Lloyd and he is a guy who's got all kinds of problems with his marriage. He has uh, mother-in-law problems. It's a comedy. It's really kind of funny. We're going to play a, just a small portion of this, and you'll get an idea of what kind of movies they're playing right now at the Warners. This one is called Hot Water, November the 21st it plays. Let's take a look.
uh, that was Hot Water starring Harold Clayton Lloyd. A lot of funny stuff. Now, we won't hear the sound, uh, the music from the uh, video. The audience will hear it from the organ well, right? Right. The uh, organist uh, is literally sits down below the movie, looking <laughs> up at the movie, and plays along uh, with the movie. And the, the old organ uh, has uh, the full kit where they can make uh, sounds like the doorbell ringing and uh, uh, the car horn or train whistles, etc. Yeah. Okay, talking to Dan Fitzpatrick, the executive director of the Warner's Theater. Of course, Hot Water comes up on November the 21st. A lot of silent movies taking place there in the next few months. We'll give you the schedule. We'll put that up on the screen on the other side of the break and talk more about the Warner's Theater 436 Me TV option 11. And don't forget, turn down the sound when you call in. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. I want to quickly put up on the screen so Dan Patrick can kind of go through these, the events that are coming up on silent movies. We've already talked about November the 21st. The one that comes after is December the 19th. This one, uh, Christmas cartoons. Uh, talk about this a little bit. Well, this is, uh, we're, we're going to have a short with a Laurel and Hardy uh, uh, silent film, followed by a number of silent cartoons that were uh, of, you know, the Christmas type uh, uh, season. And so we're gearing both uh, November and December months to uh, films that would appeal to the kids and school school age children. Yeah. Okay. Got a call here. Good morning. You're on with Dan Fitzpatrick. Your question, please. Hi. I'm really excited about this. I wish I would have known about the Phantom of the Opera. I would love to have taken my nieces and nephews to go see that movie. Uh, but the Warner's Brothers, right? The Warner's Theater, I mean? Yes, it's at the Warner's yeah. Theater. Yeah. Okay, and I saw the schedule. Will the schedule also be like in the Fresno B paper, like the weekend or the spotlight? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's normally there, but the best place to uh, keep up with everything we're doing at the Warner Center is to go to our website, which is warners.org. Uh -huh. Just go to warners.org, and you will see all the programs that are coming up. And the best thing that yeah. you like about this are the prices. Go ahead and read off the prices. Well, the uh, prices are 1928 prices. They're uh, <laughs> they're three dollars, three dollars. They're three dollars a ticket, and eight dollars for the whole family. So you have a family of six. Bring the whole family down for eight dollars. Sure. I mean, I have. I'm 47 years old, and my kids, as well as my nieces and nephews, I grew up mostly in the 70s, where we didn't have cable or anything, access to internet. So our schools always showed these great films. Buster Keaton's my favorite, and Harold Lloyd, yeah. like you said, Charlie Chaplin, with all the stunts going on in there. And they watch it on my computer, they watch it on my 50-inch television, but it'll be great for them to watch it on the big screen. And then you said you're going to have organ music playing in the background. That, yeah. That's an extra right there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank we you have... very much for putting that up. Yeah, yeah we have uh, our uh, local uh, organists that... Uh, have uh, a history and background of playing along with uh, the silent films and it takes a lot of work to put the score together for an entire film and the first is two that, that why had, you only do it once a month uh, well we <laughs> there is it. a lot of work behind the scenes that, yeah there's yeah. a lot of work behind the scenes and what we're trying to do is that thursdays of each week we want to over a period of time have thursdays movie night oh and okay. so each month right now for generally it's in general the third thursday is we're having the silent films and you'll see other ones coming up that will be doing some of the uh like we want to do the oscar movie of the decade for say the last seven decades the 30s the 40s the 50s that's a cool and, idea uh, and and to have some sing-alongs like sound yeah. of music west side story uh, that we do. So we're going to have different series and different things to appeal to a number of different uh, uh, groups uh, in, in the Fresno community. In your opinion, before we go to the full screens again, uh, what's the state of the arts and culture here in the city of Fresno? Oh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, growing in leaps and bounds. What's especially 
interesting to me because we not only run the theater, we run Frank's Place, which is like a nightclub operation, and we have a tremendous of, amount of local talent that comes out and plays every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And just watching the young kids come and develop and you know move into uh, their particular uh, turning an avocation into a vocation is right, great. Right. Another call. Good morning. You're on Connect with me. Your question? Yeah, good morning, John. Dan, I have a big one for you. I want another doo-wop show. And I haven't checked the website yet, so I could be speaking out of turn. Is that coming up soon, I hope? Well, uh, well it's interesting that you mention it, that I have a, a promoter that I've been chatting with to do exactly that, hopefully, uh, sometime next year. It's a matter of finding. There's a lot of doo-wop shows, and I want to find the the right show that I think would appeal especially to the Fresno audience and bring them uh, in. Uh, we haven't had a doo-wop show, I think, at Warner's for like two or three years. So uh, you're right on target, and we're in uh, discussions right now. Yeah, can you look for the one, the, the guy that sings uh, Oh, Denise? Uh, Mike Zero, I think. Uh, you could check it out. He, 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 I believe he's in charge. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Besides Duop, would you uh, is is there any other performance or film that you'd like to to present to the audience at Warner's that you're trying to get? Uh, well, what we're trying to do at Warner's is that Warner's needs to be uh, a a venue that all demographics of Fresno feels comfortable with. So one of the things we're working on is Mexican movie night with okay. the Mexican consul. We're working with them on movies from Mexico that are, you know, films, et cetera, to have a Thursday would night. Would some of those be silent films? Uh, yeah, or? they actually have some uh, silent films, but there are okay. also some other uh, really great uh, shows that we will have. So we're trying to have things, uh, uh, both music, films, uh, theatrical performances that relate to the young kids us old right. white guys, right. uh, you okay. know, the, you know, a whole, a whole host of things so that it's, it's the community's theater. It sounds like because this place was built back in 1928, you're trying to 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 have a throwback in time, hmm. almost, and have the focus be on old films. Is that correct? Or old performances? Is that correct or no? Well, well no, that's just one piece of uh, what we're trying to do is uh, the silent films is a way of introducing a whole, you know, new generation to, you know, that era of film and the importance of that era of film, as well as appeal to, you know, folks that remember mom and dad dragging them to the movies when they were uh, right. kids. Uh, but what we're trying to do is is that we have a lot of live performances in the theater and in Star Palace and in Frank's Place. So right now you're not focusing on this era now, you're focusing on the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and 50s perhaps. Uh, yeah, More that's so. right, right, for, for a particular period of time. But again, uh, we're trying to have one night, literally, you could have the Jazz Society working with us, and the next, the next night is the burlesque. <laughs> show and the following night it could be working with the uh, uh, we work with for example the Black Chamber of Commerce on right. and having uh, you know various shows and so forth that is appeal uh, appeal to their community so we try to do something that is for the entire Fresno community all right Dan Fitzpatrick is here for 36 me TV option 11 back with our Warner's theater talk in just a moment after practicing law, Raymond Burr fought crime. You have the right to an attorney. As a hard-boiled detective on wheels. Ain't it the truth? His name is Ironside. Perhaps you wouldn't mind saying it again. His name is Ironside. All right, now you've said it. Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. The Warner's Theater opened way back when, way before you and I were born, or many of us were born anyway, not all of us, but uh, many of us here in the Central Valley, um, you know, look up to the Warner's Theater as a throwback to a, an era that uh, is long gone. It will never be again. But uh, you're trying to bring that theme back, and I want to put up some more um, full screens up on the screen right there. Silent Movie Night, January 16, 2013. Um, actually, <laughs> you know, that date is wrong. It should be 2014. The Great Train Robbery, that would be January 16th uh, in just a couple of months. And the next one would be February 
2014. That would be Pollyanna. We try not to be too Pollyannish on this show. Anyway, March the 6th, 2014 would be the Lost World, the silent uh, movie night there. So that's the, now after March. Is that it? Well, that's uh, it for this series of seven. Okay. Then uh, what we're trying to do is to have each fall and spring each year uh, another series. I will pick another series to have, and we're trying to have them during the month school is in session. So we literally have school groups come with their school buses right. uh, to come to the show. So we uh, try to reach out to the school community uh, right. to bring this to them. Right. We want to emphasize that's 2014. Right. Not, not 2013. Okay. Um, video of the ceiling and the organ well. Let's roll one of them. Uh, don't care which one. Uh, put it up there. That's the ceiling right there. Talk a little bit about that because when Sally was here uh, a couple of months ago, we went through this whole place top to bottom very thoroughly with a fine tooth comb. That, that's an incredible dome there. Talk about the dome. Oh, it's uh, absolutely uh, a, an incredible uh, architectural uh, wonder in, in terms of they certainly don't make things like this anymore. What people don't realize is that because it's too costly to make well, it's very like this? costly and it's it's a uh, there was a lot of artisans back then uh, uh, Alexander Pantages this was one of the last or one of his next to last theater he built so by the time he built this one he had a lot of practice at it yeah <laughs> and he had a lot of craftsmen that could do it yeah. and people don't realize that this dome, is not a dome that's a ceiling. This is a dome that's suspended by wires from a flat ceiling and roof above it. So it was placed there. Right. It's okay. up. Okay. And, and you can get up, see where the crown is along there. You can get up and there's a catwalk to go up there uh, and walk around. And so we can make the Hoisted ceiling. Hoisted there by a crane, I would assume, or maybe several I, cranes. I'm not exactly sure how they... You mean you weren't there? When I, that, was, that, that, I yeah, wasn't yeah, there. Okay. Uh, well, I wasn't there either. I, I, you know, I, many people thought I was, but uh, <laughs> good morning, you're on Connect with me. How are you? <laughs> Go ahead. Your question, quickly, hurry. Yes, uh, Dan, I was wondering, since uh, <laughs> you're, you're uh, showing films on Thursday evening, and the kids go to school on Friday morning. Have you thought of coordinating uh, this cultural effort with the schools? Maybe the teachers would like to uh, uh, bring up the subject of the, of the movie that was played the night before, and uh, this might be a, a great way to advertise and expand uh, uh, participation in this program. I'll listen to your answer on the air. Okay, well, that's a very good point. What we're doing twofold. One is, is that uh, each movie we get out to literally uh, hundreds of uh, teachers and administrators in our local school district and a number of them have brought their kids uh, down and families down and we we are giving away free passes to really? those school we give away we got a grant from the Bonner Foundation as oh. and other sponsors that we're giving away tickets uh, to the various school districts and their family tickets. They can bring the whole family. And so literally 20 to 25 percent of our audience have been folks from the schools that are coming down. How many can you get in there for a silent movie, let's say? Well, the theater holds 2,100, and so we had the, uh, with the 1,200 for Phantom of the Opera. Right. We, had a, we had a good crowd in there. 500 but, for uh, Charlie Chaplin, of course. Right. Well, also to finish the, the question, answer the question, this Harold Lloyd uh, movie, we're also having a 3 p.m. matinee hmm. that is geared specifically to the, the school so they can do an after school type of an event and so the on the same day on the 21st same, on the same day okay and then at uh, after the 3 p.m. would be the 7 p.m. the 7 p.m. so we're getting a lot of tickets out to the school districts that the families and kids can pick one come All to right. 3 o'clock come to 7 o'clock now you mentioned the organ well of course during the movie um, the organist is there playing I want to go to the videotape and show the organ well uh, and you can talk about this. Now, who is the organist that will be playing this magnificent? Well, our, our local organist and organ. uh, uh, master is Richard Sensabaugh, who okay. will be playing. And uh, he's outstanding. He keeps uh, the organ in tip-top shape. He's in there several times a week. And uh, Will it be going up and down like this as he's playing? No. <laughs> well, well, yes and no. What happens is, is that uh, when the movie or the show is about to start, 
he comes in at the basement level and he comes up. Uh, he comes up while he's playing. Up, yeah, yeah. At, while he's playing. And yeah. we'll start to show and we'll talk a little bit about the, the organ and the various things it can do. Then for the movie, he drops back down in the pit. So he's looking up at the movie and he plays along with the movie. And then at the end, he comes up and does a final uh um, you Speaking know, of not making them anymore, they they do they don't make these anymore. I don't think not like this. Well, this is the last uh, remaining Morton uh, pipe organ in its original setting, the original uh, elevator shaft in yeah. the United States. Yeah. So, uh, and this is not just a like a church you know organ. This is specifically designed to be able to play along with the acts and the films that are on stage. Like it can make sounds like a bunch yeah. of people talking in the background. and Yeah, I'm uh, not sure I'd want to be in there around 2 in the morning on Halloween with that, that thing playing. It just it would be a little scary. Well, it's, uh, it, it is, it, well, we've had, <laughs> you know well, we mean? had Rocky Horror Picture Show there. I know, that's Halloween, why I said that. And, I know, uh, I know. And uh, it was uh, well received. That we had the midnight showing of Rocky Horror Picture Show. And uh, Did uh, so, Boris Karloff show up uh, at any no, point? No, no, he's he, still he haunting didn't. the halls uh, uh, underground. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I, I want to show one more piece of video here if we have time. It's called the substage and this is this is operated through hydraulics. It's a very fascinating piece of video. There it is right there. Sally talked about this a couple of months ago and I'm just fascinated by this uh, subflooring here. Go ahead and uh, expand on it if you will. Well, the what it is is uh, you know, the floor uh, when you come into the theater, that's a form bowl of concrete mm -hmm. uh, and underneath it, it you can literally crawl under it and that's how you heat the whole facility is the boilers put heat into the cavity underneath and it rises up through vents uh, in um, the theater. Yeah and there you see uh, some of the hydraulic systems there and I, I would imagine that has to do with the organ right? Yeah the uh, organ is all on hydraulics as well as a couple elevators that uh, service the alley and the street down to you know the basement. Now has that organ well been there since day one? Yes it was. 1928? Uh, yes the even back in 1928 the most expensive cost to a production was what? Labor. Yeah. So the organ replaced the whole orchestra. Ah. And there's literally job descriptions of organist one, organist two that wow. played. They'd go in there and they'd play a seven or eight hour shift and they'd pay them. They'd go home and the next guy would come in uh, to play the organ. And it was a lot cheaper than having, you know, 15 to 20 uh, folks for uh, an, in an orchestra. So the organ replaced the orchestra and so they only had to pay one person. All right, out of time. Dan Fitzpatrick, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Watch the replay of the show tonight, 730, sure. Comcast 187. Thank you so much. November the 21st, it will be what? Hot Water with Harold Clayton Lloyd. Thank you to Dan Fitzpatrick of the Warner's Theater. Back tomorrow with our special show on the Fresno State Bulldogs and the Pag Meter will be here. Nick Papagni, back tomorrow. Have a great day. This is Adam 12. One Adam 12, Roger. Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187.